Hello friends. Welcome to the S3 Cloud Hub YouTube channel. In this AWS SQS tutorial, we will see queue access policies. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So first of all, there are two good use cases for SQS queue access policies. They're similar to S3 bucket policies in terms that they are resource policies. So JSON IAM policies that you're going to add directly onto your SQS queue. So the first use case is to allow cross account access. Let's say you have a queue in an account and another account needs to access that queue. Maybe it has an EC2 instance. So for that EC2 instance to be able to pull message across accounts, what you need to do is to create a queue access policy. And that looks like this. And you attach it to the SQS queue in the first account. Now what this queue access policy will do is that it will allow the principle of AWS to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, which represents the account on the right hand side on the SQS receive message on this resource right here. And so this queue access policy is really what will allow your EC2 instance to pull from the SQS queue in another account. Now another use case for SQS queue access policy is for example when you have an S3 bucket and it will publish event notifications to an SQS queue. So for example you upload an object into an S3 bucket and what you want is to get automatically a message sent to the SQS queue. As you can see, the SQS queue will need to give permission to the S3 bucket to write a message to it. And therefore we need to create our own SQS queue access policy that looks like this. And here if you look at the details, for example the action is SQS send message. The principal AWS starts from any accounts, as long as the condition is that the source ARN of the bucket represents the S3 bucket named bucket1 and that the source accounts needs to be the account owner of the S3 buckets. So once you have this, then the S3 bucket is allowed to write to an SQS queue. That's something important, because the exam will test you on, for example what is needed to write to SQS queue for cross-account access, or for publishing S3 event notifications. So there you have it. Now let's see this practically. So here, let's create a queue, and set up an SQS queue access policy. I'll call this one as S3 event because we're going to set up an S3 event notification to go into this SQS queue. And now I will keep everything else as the default. And here, as we can see, the SQS access policy is here. And so here we can define what kind of services can send data into our SQS queue. So if we choose the basic method, then we can select only the queue owner to send data into our SQS queue, which would represent this. Or we can select only the specified accounts, IAM users, and roles specified right here. So this is one to get cross accounts access, for who can send messages to the queue. Then we have the same dialog, for who can receive messages from the queue as well. Or we can do advanced, and write our own SQS queue access policy for this. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna choose basic, show you that things don't work in the beginning, and then we're going to modify it and then see that things will work afterwards. So we're just going to create this queue, right here. And now, I'm going to go into Amazon S3. And I'm going to create an S3 bucket, so let's create it. And from the S3 bucket, set up event notification to send data into our SQS queue. So here I will call it as, Demo SQS, Access Policy, 22. And then, simply I will click on create bucket. So here it is. Let's open it. And here, I'm going to go into properties. Scroll down, and find our event notifications. And here, I'm going to create an event notification. I'll call it as, new objects. And it will for all prefix, and all suffix. And for event types, we're gonna choose, all objects create events. Then scroll down. And for the destination, the destination is going to be an SQS queue. Here we need to choose from the SQS queue, so we find our S3 events. Click on save changes. And here as we can see, we get an error, because right now it is unable to validate the following destination configurations. So what we need to do is, 
is to go into this access policy. And we need to modify it to allow our S3 bucket to write into our SQSQ. So for this, we can go directly into the documentation and see if we can find this policy for us. So we'll just do a simple Google search for like S3 events into SQS access policy. And this should give us access to what we need. So yes, we have event notifications. And here, let's go to granting permission. Then let's scroll down to the SQS queue. So here it is. And here is the policy document that we need to set up for our SQS queue. So I'm going to copy it. Edit this. And I'm going to paste it here. And of course, here we need to change something, like we need to give some information to it. So first here, we need to give out bucket name. So let's go into our bucket. Let's copy our bucket name from here. And that will be passed it here. And now here in the source account owner, we need to give our account number. So let's click on our profile. And here is our account number. So let's copy this. And simply paste it here. So guys, this policy allows our S3 bucket to send a message into our SQS queue. We'll save this. And here we go. So now with this new policy, let's see if we can save our event notification or not. And yes we can. So this was completed successfully. And actually if you go into Amazon SQS. And here, let's go to descend and receive messages. Okay there's one message that is available. We can pull for it, so let's click on it. So look at it, and see that the test event was sent by Amazon S3 into our SQS queue. So guys that's it really for this hands-on. So this is how we can provide access from our S3 bucket into our SQS queue by modifying an access policy. I hope you all guys enjoyed the lecture, and I will see you in the next lecture. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.